Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing P2Y receptors. Okay, right, so we've now discussed the eight different types of P2Y receptors and the different ligands that activate them. Okay, we now want to discuss uh, the fact that, that, that these all eight of these receptors are G-protein coupled receptors and we want to discuss some general stuff about G-protein coupled receptors so that we can understand uh, what the activation of these receptors is actually going to do. Okay, right, so G-protein coupled receptors then and strictly speaking, there should be a dash between G and protein and protein and coupled. Okay, so G protein coupled receptors, which are often abbreviated to GPCRs. Okay, so uh, this is the largest family of proteins within the human genome. Okay, or at least I think it is. I think it, well, it's certainly one of the biggest. I think it actually is the biggest. Okay, uh, it's got 800 uh, members, okay, so there are 800 known G-protein coupled receptors in humans alone. I think if you go over all the animals that we've investigated now, rather all the life forms that we've investigated now, I think we've found overall 30,000 G-protein coupled receptors, and of course we haven't been through all the forms of life yet. So this is a massive, massive great family of receptors, okay, and they all have the same characteristic structure, okay, so they all have their amino termini extracellularly, like so, so here's the amino terminus, then they have their first membrane spanning alpha helix, like so, okay, then they have their second membrane spanning alpha helix, the third membrane spanning alpha helix, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh membrane spanning alpha helix. Okay, so G protein coupled receptors all have these characteristic seven membrane spanning alpha helices. So this line represents the polypeptide basically as it spans the membrane. Okay, and it's not really understood what the significance of the seven membrane spanning alpha helices actually is. Nature seems to have found this structure and then run with it basically, but we don't know why this seven membrane spanning alpha helice structure is so important, what the significance of it actually is. Okay, right. So let's just discuss the basic structure then of G protein coupled receptors because uh, there is some nomenclature I'd like to introduce you to. So we'll start with these seven membrane spanning alpha helices then, now highlighted in turquoise here. So the first one, the one that's closest to the amino terminus, this is known as the transmembrane domain 1 or TM1. The second one is then called the transmembrane domain 2, or TM2. The third one is then called the transmembrane domain 3, or TM3. The fourth one is then called transmembrane domain 4, or TM4. The fifth one is then called uh, transmembrane domain 5, or TM5. The sixth one, transmembrane domain 6, or TM6. And then finally, the seventh one here is then called TM7, for transmembrane domain 7. Okay, so that's just the naming up of the different transmembrane domains. But there are some other important structures as well that are also given names. So, we have these three loops here, which are on the intracellular side, okay, that I've now highlighted in red, okay? And these three loops are called the intracellular loops, okay? And for short, intracellular loop is often abbreviated to ICL, okay? I for intracellular, C for cellular, uh, sorry, I for intra, C for cellular, and then L for loop, okay? So ICL. So the first intracellular loop, which is between transmembrane domain 1 and transmembrane domain 2, that will be called ICL1. So this will be called ICL1 here. The second one that's between transmembrane uh, domain 3 and TM4, rather, uh, that will be called ICL2. The third one, which is between TM5 and TM6, that will be called ICL3. Okay, now then, if we're going to label up the intracellular loops, we should also label up the extracellular loops here in purple. 
Okay, so we have three extracellular loops as well, and for short, the extracellular loops are labelled ECLs, E for extra, C for cellular, L for loop. And the first one that's between uh, TM2 and TM3, that's called ECL1. The second one that's between TM4 and TM5, that's called ECL2. The third one that's between TM6 and TM7, that's called ECL3. Okay, so you have ECL1 all the way up to ECL3. And similarly, we have ICL1 all the way up to ICL3. Okay, right. So, let's now discuss the classification then of G-protein coupled receptors into five families because there are these 800 different G-protein coupled receptors in the humans alone and to help us understand them, we group them into five families. Okay, right, so we'll start off with the first family. So, family number one is the main family. Okay, and it's called the rhodopsin family uh, of G protein coupled receptors because the receptor rhodopsin, which is a receptor for light, really important in uh, rod cells within the retina. Okay, uh, this is a G protein coupled receptor and it's within this family, so it's the a very, very highly studied uh, receptor of this family, a very notable member of this family. But nearly all of the notable GPCRs are within this family. Okay, so this is easily the biggest family with around 750 members, basically. Okay, so what's the characteristic feature then that you have to have in order to be put in the Rhodopsin family of G-protein coupled receptors? Well, you have a very small amino terminal domain, okay? So the amino terminal domain is this portion that's prior to TM1 here, okay, which we haven't actually covered in. Okay, so you have this portion very short. Uh, then you have the characteristic structures, okay? So the structures that all G protein coupled receptors have, TM1 through TM7, ICL1 through ICL3, ECL1 through ECL3. And then you also have quite a short carboxylic acid terminal over here. Okay, now the characteristic feature then that all of these Rhodopsin family G protein coupled receptors share is where they bind their ligand. The ligand is going to bind to the transmembrane domains, basically. Okay, so it will bind to residues which are in the seven membrane spanning alpha helices. Now, it will generally bind to a portion that's within the extracellular one third, okay, rather than the intracellular two thirds. So that's the characteristic feature that all of these receptors have it's that they bind their ligand in the extracellular one third of the uh, transmembrane domain. Okay, and we'll continue this discussion in the next video.